back in the day when I was in high school, we used to go to parties, but you know, I grew up in El Paso, Texas. We had a curfew for people under the age of 17 and I was definitely under 17 and I got a curfew ticket. Well, I had to disclose that curfew ticket. <laughs> guys welcome back to the channel welcome if you're new here my name is Angela and I make videos about law school lawyer life and all things in between in today's video we're going to be discussing common reasons why people are denied admission to the bar even though they pass the bar exam and by admission to the bar I mean admitted to the practice of law okay as you guys may or may not know the board of law examiners require applicants to the bar to pass what is called the character and fitness test we won't get into the nitty-gritty of the test but essentially the test asks applicants to fill out a questionnaire and disclose all sorts of information about the applicants past history um, they must disclose any sort of arrests bouts with the law financial issues or anything of that nature this includes small things such as traffic tickets, being fired from your job, all sorts of things like that they want to know. The reason for this is applicants must essentially show that they are of good and moral character, um, which is required to be a practicing attorney. Now, admissions to the bar standards are going to vary state by state, but the reasons for being denied are pretty common among states. So we're just going to go over some general common reasons why a person might be denied admission to the bar even though they've already passed the bar exam yep it's not just about the bar exam the bar exam is a huge factor but you must pass that character and fitness test now i will say the reasons that i'm about to go over are not automatic denials to admission it will be calls for further questions about your application and information on these things so let's get into it. The first reason is unlawful conduct. Now any history of unlawful conduct is going to be a reason why you may be denied admission to the bar in your state. Unlawful conduct uh, specifically related to moral acts of turpitude such as you know sexual assault, R word, murder, things like that. Yes, those are going to be a cause for concern and you must disclose. So like I said, things as little as traffic tickets, you have to disclose. I remember on my application, I had to disclose that I got a curfew ticket because back in the day when I was in high school, we used to go to parties. But, you know, I grew up in El Paso, Texas. We had a curfew for people under the age of 17 and I was definitely under 17 and I got a curfew ticket. Well, I had to disclose that curfew ticket um, to pass the character and fitness test. So little things like that. Now, those sorts of things probably aren't gonna be an issue unless there's a history of repetitiveness. So if you have 13 traffic tickets and you, you know, have 17 misdemeanors, those types of things are going to count against you. Basically any sort of repeated fines or violations or just something that shows you have a disregard for the law. Okay, so the next common reason is academic or employment related misconduct. Okay, so this could be anything as far as, you know, you got fired from a job, um, you know, because you did something wrong or you got in trouble in college for plagiarizing a paper, those types of things you do have to disclose and those could count against, you know, their decision to admit you to the bar. All right, so the next common reason is acts involving dishonesty and fraud. Now, this is kind of going to be a theme throughout everything um, because a lot of these, you know, relate to dishonesty. But like, say you don't reveal things that are on your record and you know you're supposed to reveal them and you don't in your application. You know, that's kind of an act of dishonesty. Or say you have a history of forging checks, you know, fraud or scamming. You guys know scamming's all the rage these days. Say you got a PPP loan when you didn't have a business that is going to be something that will count against you in your character and fitness application okay so the next common reason is neglect of financial responsibilities or professional responsibilities so this could be anything ranging from failure to pay child support bankruptcy defaulting on student loan debt anything of that nature could cause the bar to want to inquire more and get from more information as to whether you can pass the character and fitness test. Next common reason is violation of a court order. So say you are required to pay child support or alimony and you don't do that, you're violating the court order. Say you have a restraining order against you, which 
probably will be another thing you have to disclose, but say you are breaking that restraining order. Those are the types of things that are going to come in question under this common reason. Okay, so the next one is conduct evidencing either mental or emotional instability to the extent that it might prohibit you from being able to adequately practice law. Now this one has been kind of in controversy for the past several years because you have to be very careful about mental health, right? You know, you can't just say someone can't be a lawyer because they may, you know, go to therapy or they may have some mental health issues. And so there's been a lot of controversy back and forth. So different bar associations, this one definitely varies state by state because different bar associations have eliminated a lot, if not all of their mental health related questions. And they have to just be very careful that it's not whether you have mental health issues or emotional issues, it's whether that impairs your ability to adequately be able to practice law. So there's a very slippery slope there and it is one that's been in question quite a bit in the most recent years. Okay, so the last common reason is conduct evidencing either drug or alcohol abuse. Um, and this is kind of the same as the mental health in the sense of not necessarily whether you abuse drugs or alcohol, but if that impairs your ability to practice law. You have to be very careful about that. The bar does encourage anyone who may be battling with substance abuse or think that they might be to seek help um, because it's very real and it's very serious and it's unfortunately common in the legal profession, um, you know, where uh, lawyers are more likely to fall victim to alcohol abuse than some other professions. So that's something that I think the bar and many people take serious within our community because we do work in a high stress, you know, field. One thing to note is that a denial of admission to the bar doesn't always mean forever. Many states have come up with a contingent admission where, you know, if you show this, this, and this, you will be admitted. And then other states will allow you to be admitted later. So say you were denied. If you can show that you have been rehabilitated, you will typically be able to, you know, be admitted at a later time. If you, if you guys watch my video about Jose Baez, the attorney that, you know, got Casey Anthony off and has represented many, many people, and now is a very famous lawyer, he actually was denied admittance to the Florida bar when he first graduated from law school and it took him eight years to be admitted to the bar after he showed he had been rehabilitated and I think he had got denied you know for failure to pay child support and bankruptcy issues financial irresponsibility issues and now he's one of the most popular lawyers in the United States and some say he's one of the top lawyers so I say that to say that a denial doesn't mean a denial forever always um, and there can be light at the end of the tunnel if you are denied. Another thing I want to point out is that the standards are a little bit more stringent pre-attorney. So they're a little bit more stringent for people who have not been admitted to the bar than they are for when you are admitted to the bar. This is a common thing that is discussed is that sometimes lawyers make mistakes and they're not necessarily kicked out right away. They might be admonished, they might get, you know, a fine or a suspension or things like that, but they're not necessarily kicked out because they've done some of these things. So say you're a lawyer and then your practice goes under and you have to file for bankruptcy, you're not necessarily going to get, you know, disbarred. So that's just one thing to note as well. Let me know if you guys wanna go into a deeper dive of the character and fitness test, what it's all about and what you can do and how these factors that I just mentioned and other factors are used to determine whether you pass the character and fitness test because there are different factors such as you know how long ago was this offense if you got convicted of something those types of things that go into whether you're actually admitted or not with that you guys thanks so much for watching please don't forget to like the video comment down below and say hello make sure you're subscribed and i will see you guys in the next video peace